EEV blog. I'm your host, Dave Jones, and this is episode number 14. First up, I've got a rather interesting phenomenon I bet you haven't seen before. It's quite unusual and involves an oscilloscope again. We had an oscilloscope special last week, so I thought I'd show you a really interesting phenomenon. Now what you need is an oscilloscope, digital storage oscilloscope, 100 megahertz bandwidth, the higher the better, um, but you can do it using a 100 megahertz bandwidth scope, so I've got a TDS220. You need a standard times 10 Crow Pro, and short the input, just like that, and set your scope up to um, single shot capture, 10 nanoseconds per division, um, and maybe uh, one volt um, per division uh, vertical. Um, but you can go a bit lower than that if you can't get the phenomenon as easily as I'm about to show you. And I'll explain it all later. So I'm going to put the oscilloscope down here on the bench. And I'll show you a close up of it later. And put the probe on the bench. Remember the probe is still shorted. Okay, probe is completely shorted. It's going to sit on the bench. I'm going to set it to trigger at about the one volt level. And let's go run. And what I'm going to do is it's about to trigger. I'll show you the waveform in a minute. And I'm just going to stand up like that. And bingo, we've captured something. And check out, whoops, that was a screwdriver falling on the ground. Check out what we've captured. Isn't that cool? That's one volt per division, right? And that is a very nice sinusoidal type uh, impulse with a very sinusoidal, as you can see, at about 100 megahertz. It's a beautiful um, burst, it's a beautiful sinusoidal burst. And there you go, check it out. Isn't it groovy? I'll explain how you actually get this and what's actually happening here. Now, I know what you're thinking. This must be some kind of trick, right? I'm trying to bullshit you. I can guarantee you I'm not. You can do this exact same thing at home and get the exact same response I did, or similar to what I did, by simply standing up off a chair. And you can do it using a shorted crow probe, right? This is a crow probe, a proper, you know, a good quality crow probe that is shorted. And um, so therefore, you shouldn't be able to get any input at all to your oscilloscope, right? That's what you'd think. And all I did was stand up off the chair. Can you figure out what's happening? I'll tell you in a sec. Now, before I tell you what's actually happening here, I'll give you a background story about how I actually found this phenomenon. And uh, I was at um, uh, work, I was uh, debugging a um, complex digital design. This was quite a few years ago. And I was, um, I had my scope um, set up. The, uh, uh, the complex circuit I was working on, it was, um, it was actually, uh, it was getting glitches every couple of days and it was crashing and doing all sorts of weird things. So I set up the oscilloscope uh, to actually monitor the uh, digital signals, some clocks and other things. And um, I would sit there and wait for it to trigger. I'd set the trigger to about, you know, a volt or a volt and a half or two volts, you know, sort of center scale on a 3.3 uh, volt digital signal. And I was getting all these little glitch captures every now and then. I was capturing all these little glitches. And I thought, aha, I found, you know, I found, I found a problem. I'm getting these glitches on my digital rail. And I'd uh, zoom in and what I was actually seeing was, you know, like this. It was a um, sinusoidal type burst um, at you know, roughly a hundred megahertz or thereabouts, and um, it was—it's got the classic uh, tank circuit um, type shape to it. So I thought, aha, there's some sort of, you know, weird uh, ground capacitive tank circuit uh, thing happening in my design somewhere. Something's—it's um, getting a burst of energy and it's oscillating, or it's some DC to DC converter in there playing up, pumping em energy into a weird ground capacitive configuration or something like that and uh well no after some investigation it turned out there was nothing wrong with the circuit at all it was actually the oscilloscope and the crow probe 
and and that, that was actually at fault. And I proved this by doing exactly what I did just here. I shorted out my query probe. I couldn't believe what I was what was happening in the circuit. So I short just as a sanity check, shorted out my crow probe, and sure enough, I could reproduce this. And it wasn't connected to my circuit at all. So I knew there was nothing wrong. And there's actually something very interesting happening here. Now, there are two things that make this phenomenon possible. One, well, three things, actually. One is the uh, inductance of a coax cable used in oscilloscope probes like this, and the input capacitance of uh, the oscilloscope. And um, what that does, that forms an LC tank circuit. And the key to uh, what's happening here, though, is when I stand up from the chair, I'm generating static electricity. Broadband energy, which is uh, static electricity, uh, is a bunch of broadband energy, which is picked up by the coax cable, and it uh, resonates the input to the oscilloscope based on the inductance of the cable and the input capacitance of the oscilloscope and a few other factors, distributed capacitance and you know all sorts of other stuff. But it basically forms an LC tank circuit, and that's why you get a response that's perfectly sinusoidal like that, because the broadband en energy being injected into the cable, it resonates at the frequency of that LC circuit. Right, so I'll just do a quick illustration of what's actually happening here. Now, your crow probe is actually a 9 meg resistor in parallel with a small cap, and then you've got your cable, okay? This is your coax cable, which is actually inductive. So we can represent an inductor in there, and you've got the input to your oscilloscope, which is capacitive, and also 1 meg as well, and that's ground. And then if you, this is the probe tip, if you ground that as well, okay, your system's all uh, grounded, and it's closed loop, but when you inject broadband energy via static electricity into the coax cable, the whole system resonates and you get out your sinusoidal energy pulse like that. And that's exactly what you see on the oscilloscope. It's not magic. It's, um, it's, it isn't a trick. It's just a phenomenon of uh, LC tank circuits formed by the very low um, inductance of the scope probe and if you actually do the um, calculations uh, you know the um, resonant um, formula is 1 over 2 pi square root LC and that um, generate and that's your formula for your uh, resonant tank circuit and um, there's there's quite a few complex factors involved in here but if you do some just basic back of the envelope calculations it turns out that, sure enough, based on the inductance of a typical uh, coax cable and input capacitance of a scope, it's um, pretty much always going to resonate at around about the 100, you know, 120 megahertz mark or thereabouts. And you can do this on practically any scope and any probe, and you'll pretty much get a very similar result. Now, you can also get this uh, phenomenon to happen on a uh, times one uh, probe as well, and also just a regular uh, coax cable too if you're lucky and um, yeah it, it really doesn't discriminate too much so what's the moral of this neat little phenomenon well it's uh, really you should be careful when you're uh, probing stuff because you can actually get um, glitches in your uh, coax input that has nothing to do with your circuit and it looks like uh, you can have something wrong with your circuit so just be careful when you're actually probing this. And I've actually had this uh, phenomenon happen with me in a full lab coat um, with a you know ESD uh, bench as well. But still, somehow the static gets through and it impulses into the probe. And we aren't talking very low signal levels here. We're talking you know volts in some cases. So I hope you learn something new there. That's definitely something you'll never learn in school. And just in case you're wondering. I actually got that to work on the very first take. I didn't have to refilm it. It's easy. Try it yourself.
Go have fun.